Hello and welcome to the second session on Laser Basics. The objectives of this session are learn different types of light matter interaction and find out how laser operates and we will learn a new concept called population inversion. What is a laser? In the first session I told you it is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So uh, in this uh, session we will see the meaning of each of these words. So to begin with we will uh, focus on this term stimulated emission. So we will see uh, what are the different types of emission first. There are two types of emissions, spontaneous and stimulated. So before explaining what is spontaneous and stimulated emission, let us uh, have a look at uh, the three types of light matter interaction process. Uh, that is the way in which light will interact with material or the ways in which photon can interact with electrons. There are basically three types of processes as showed here uh, 1, 2 and 3. The first one is spontaneous emission. The second one is stimulated emission and the third one is absorption. Let us begin with absorption. I have explained absorption and emission in the previous session. So let us begin with absorption which is listed third here it is written as stimulated absorption but it is sufficient to say absorption I will explain why it is so so anyway basically we are considering two energy levels an upper energy level and a lower energy level and there is an incoming photon you can see uh, that this blue circle represents an electron so you can see uh, in the third diagram, the lowermost diagram, you can see that there is uh, an electron in the lower orbital. Or you can also assume that this blue color circles represent atoms. And uh, this, uh, if so, you can assume that uh, the lower energy level contains an atom and the upper energy level is vacant and a photon is coming. It can interact with this atom in the ground state or uh, not necessarily ground state, the lower energy level. So the photon will transfer its energy to the atom and the atom will absorb that energy and it will go to the excited state. So that is shown on the right side in the bottom most figure. After absorption, the atom has gone to the upper state and the photon has disappeared. And this process is referred to as absorption. And the second one, or no, not the second one, the first one, spontaneous emission. So in the case of spontaneous emission, it is actually the reverse of the previous process. Uh, you have an atom in the excited state, uh, but that energy level is unstable. So the atom will somehow try to come down to the lower energy level. And during that process, it will liberate, it will emit uh, its extra energy, which is the energy difference between these two levels that will be given out as a photon. So in the spontaneous emission process, an atom has come down to the lower energy level by emitting a photon. And uh, the second one or the last one is the stimulated emission. You have got an atom which is already in the excited state and there is an incoming photon and this photon is stimulating this atom in the excited state uh, to come down to the lower state. So after this process what we have is the atom is taken to the lower energy level but that incoming photon hasn't disappeared but it has created an additional photon. That additional photon is the energy liberated during the de-excitation process. So uh, one photon to begin with and two photon at the output. So these are the three processes and they are broadly classified as spontaneous process and stimulated process. So you can see there are two types of stimulated process here, stimulated emission and stimulated absorption. Why uh, they are called stimulated and another one is called spontaneous. Uh, the reason the class
classification is like this if a process requires a photon to take place then that process is called stimulated whereas a, a spontaneous process does not require a photon to initiate the process so uh, so basically if you go back and see the all these three uh, processes you can see that absorption requires a photon so it is uh, that's why it is written as stimulated absorption and the uh, out of the two types of emission process spontaneous emission uh, just take place on its own uh, randomly and it does not require a photon so it's that's why it is called a spontaneous uh, emission and another type of emission here which requires a photon uh, to uh, take place and that is called stimulated emission uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is absorption always require requires a photon so there is no point in keeping this word stimulated along with absorption so if you like for example if absorption and emission if you classify them as stimulated and spontaneous there is a spontaneous emission and stimulated emission on the other hand there is only stimulated absorption and there is no spontaneous absorption so there is no point in uh, calling this stimulated absorption it is sufficient to say absorption uh, now I will try to explain how a laser work works. Uh, so to begin with, uh, uh, I have used a diagram which I downloaded from the internet. Uh, you can see uh, it's a pink color road and uh, two gray colored discs are uh, placed on either side. And this pink color uh, road cylinder uh, is, uh, is called the laser active medium. It is a material which we use in order to make the laser. So basically it is composed of some atoms and molecules or ions uh, in, a, uh, in a solid matrix. Uh, it is not necessary that all the laser material be solid. There can be uh, liquid uh, material uh, and gas materials can also act act as active medium in this case uh, whatever be the form it is just an active medium and here you can see uh, many blue dots and those blue dots represent atoms in the ground state so to begin with you have got an active medium in which most of the atoms are in the ground state because ground state is the most stable state uh, so there will be some atoms in the excited state but majority of the atoms will be in the lower state or the ground state and there are uh, there are two uh, disks here they are actually mirrors uh, the active medium is placed between those two mirrors and uh, out of those two mirrors the left one or one of those mirrors typically in the diagram you uh, use the left mirror as the fully reflecting mirror that means uh, any photon which is hitting uh, coming from this active medium and hitting that mirror all those photon will be going back into the active medium or will be reflected off this uh, mirror uh, whereas the mirror on the right side is a partially reflecting mirror uh, partially reflecting is not 50-50 but uh, most, uh, in most cases it will be like a 95% reflecting and 5% transmitting or even more uh, percentage of reflection and less transmission uh, like 98 to uh, these are the uh, typical reflectivity that we can uh, see in typical uh, lasers. Uh, so uh, these two are two of the important components of the laser active medium which is the material that we use in order to construct the laser and a pair of mirrors between which the active medium is uh, placed and those two par pairs of a pair of mirrors are referred to as optical resonators uh, and the next process is uh, you initially we had all the most of the atoms in the ground state the second uh, pro uh, step is to uh, take uh, create a situation which we call population inversion population inversion is a, a situation in which the upper energy levels will be more populated than the lower energy levels so that means the atoms which were 
majority of the atoms were in the ground state and uh, those atoms should be given energy so that they can go to the upper energy level so in order to create population inversion we will uh, inject uh, some kind of energy suitable uh, type of energy to the active medium and will excite the atoms so during that process the atoms uh, that have absorbed energy will go to the excited state and that is what is shown with this using this purple uh, dots and the third step is uh, these atoms which are represented as purple dots they are in the excited state which are unstable so these atoms will de-excite so the uh, during the de-excitation process uh, they can emit photons and uh, that process is called the spontaneous emission and the spontaneously emitted photons uh, depending on the location of the atoms and the movement of the atoms uh, they can be uh, uh, propagating in any direction and they can em uh, come out at any instant so uh, we have uh, actually here only one spontaneously emitted photon is shown using this uh, jiggly arrow uh, uh, from the on the left uh, left end and that uh, purple dot uh, which is the excited atom it de-excites uh, through spontaneous emission and it is emitting a photon and that photon is propagating through the active medium and it can hit another atom in the excited state and stimulate that atom to come down to the lower state through stimulated emission process so now we will be having two photons one initial photon and the second photon is after stimulated emission process so these two photons will again propagate through the active medium they can hit two other atoms and create four become four photons like that that process will continue and the number of photons will be getting multiplied and those photons after I mean they will reach the they propagate through the active medium and will reach the mirror on the right side now when they reach the mirror on the right side it is a partially reflecting mirror majority of the light which is hitting that mirror will be reflected back into the acti active medium so the role of this mirror is by the time uh, these photons initially hit this mirror the intensity will not be sufficiently high for our use so the role of this mirror is to send back a portion of this outputs back into the active medium so that there will be more and more uh, stimulated emission and the photon number will be getting multiplied more and more so that is what is shown here the some photons are coming back and they again propagate through the active medium and they proceed towards the left and ultimately it will reach this uh, this first mirror and all of them will be reflected back into the active medium again and that process will continue and at one point we'll be having a lot of photon or the intensity will become quite high that is what is shown here uh, the the light is uh, reflected back and forth into the active medium they reflect get reflected off the first mirror and the second mirror or uh, multiple reflections will be taking place and uh, they are propagating through the active medium many times and at some point the no he number of photons become so huge and the intensity will become quite high and we'll be getting uh, the outputs uh, from uh, the uh, mirror on the right side which is partially transmitting uh, a small amount of the light which is transmitted by this mirror is the actual laser output that we see so all these processes they are uh, summed up here in this slide first one you are starting with the laser active medium in which almost all the atoms are in the ground state and the second case we have turned on the pumping source and taken all the atoms uh, not all the atoms majority of the atoms to the upper state and created population inversion and then one spontaneously emitted photon uh, is there on the left uh, left end and it is propagating and it meets uh, another atom in the excited state it stimulates uh, that atom to de-excite and uh, the total photon number has become two and these two photons propagate towards the right and it will hit the mirror on the right side and will be reflected back into the active medium some portion is coming out which is actually very feeble and the reflected uh, portion they it 
that that photons again propagate through the active medium many times uh, get reflected from the first mirror and these back and forth reflections will continue and at some point the intensity has become very huge and we are getting the partial transmittance from the output mirror as the laser output now in this process in order to have a laser operation one important feature or one important requirement is that we need to create population inversion and what is population inversion i think i had explained this in the first session but i will uh, will see it once more normally uh, in a material uh, uh, um, almost all the atoms will be in the ground state because that is the most stable sta state uh, but uh, how in the case of uh, a laser it is light amplification by stimulated emission so many atoms should simultaneously undergo stimulated emission process then only we will be having a uh, large number of photons in order to have high intensity so in order to do that uh, it is uh, mandatory to have a uh, majority of the atoms in the upper state or the population in the upper state should invariably be higher than the population in the lower state it is contrary to the normal situation uh, normally uh, this does not happen because almost all the atoms would prefer to be in the ground state so since it is contrary to the normal situation this condition is referred to as population inversion here population inversion is shown using energy level diagrams on the left side you have got normal distribution in which the lowermost energy levels are more populated uh, and uh, the uppermost levels uh, when you go high in energy the levels are getting less and less populated so the reverse will happen in the case of uh, population inversion you see uh, on the right side you have got the population inversion only between the second level and the first level so in laser operation we will have to select two suitable energy levels between which we will be able to create population inversions uh, so all the theory of laser we will be discussing only with respect to those two energy levels so in every material i mean in whichever material that you choose to create uh, to make the laser there will be a pair of energy level between which we can create population inversion and the the difference between the energy of those two levels should match with the our uh, frequency requirement also so uh, that two uh, those two energy levels are called upper laser level and lower laser level now when they reach the mirror on the right side it is a partially reflecting mirror majority of the light which is hitting that mirror will be reflected back into the acti active medium so the role of this mirror is by the time uh, these photons initially hit this mirror the intensity will not be sufficiently high for our use so the role of this mirror is to send back a portion of this outputs back into the active medium so that there will be more and more uh, stimulated emission and the photon number will be getting multiplied more and more so that is what is shown here the some photons are coming back and they again propagate through the active medium and they proceed towards the left and ultimately it will reach this uh, this first mirror and all of them will be reflected back into the active medium again and that process will continue and at one point we'll be having a lot of photon or the intensity will become quite high
so to sum up uh, today's session the conclusions are absorption and spontaneous emission and stimulated emission are examples of three types of light matter interaction stimulated emission is the cause of all the superior features of lasers uh, laser material should be placed between two mirrors for po proper light amplification uh, then uh, stimulated emission in a medium is triggered by a spontaneously emitted photon and population inversion is mandatory for laser operation and uh, in the next session we will uh, continue to learn uh, the operation of the lasers and we will see what are the essential components of a laser and we will develop uh, the theory for laser and we will uh, see what is Einstein's coefficients.